Well, good morning, church family, and good morning, Gartley family. Uh, we're very excited to have you here. Uh, I just want to give a little background about the Gartley family for those of you who don't know. Uh, Alexander and Kristen have been attending for more than three years now, and they faithfully serve on the worship team. And they have two little adorable boys, Callum and Coda. And one of the things that we love to do around here is, is bring in missionaries and have them share what's going on in the mission field and what God is doing through their ministry. And we have kind of a unique opportunity this morning with the Gartley family. Uh, one, because they're on the front end of their missionary journey. And two, because they're a part of our church family. And so... Um, Kristen and Alexander, I'd, I'd love to just give you a chance to share about what's going on, uh, this calling that you have. And uh, Alexander, you've accepted a position with Core Love, and, and I want to get to Core Love in, in just a minute, but could you guys share with you uh, what this calling looked like from God, uh, how, how he called you to become missionaries, and, and how you kind of came to this point of, of really taking that call seriously? Yeah, yeah. So we're just, we're so excited. Um, to be stepping into this and and really to to be saying yes to answer God's call. Um, in some ways, this was a surprise to us. Uh, we didn't see it coming, um, but in other ways, it's been a long time coming. And um, really, since since we've been married and even before that, we've always been really involved in ministry. Um, you know, at church and outside of church, just always had a heart for helping others, serving others, especially the underserved and just the most vulnerable. Um, and that's really been part of our story for a long time. And so we've kind of had a long time dream of being able to do that full time, um, being in ministry, whether at a church or an organization. So um, actually through through the years, we've pursued a lot of opportunities, um, but it always kind of ended with closed doors for one reason or another. And uh, so yeah, this uh, just this past fall, we were kind of in a season of really praying about what was next for our family. You know, as we talk about at Calvary, there's always a next with God. And um, yeah, just really in intently praying about that. And that's when the call came. And it was literally a phone call, um, not from God, but uh, from our friends. That would be nice. Would be <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, who were like, we, we had... Um, you know, we're close with and they were at Core Love, this organization, and um, basically a position had opened up and they were offering it to us um, to do marketing and things. And uh, they also let us know it's uh, essentially, you know, missionary. We would be living stateside, but we would uh, be in full time ministry and have to raise our own support. And our sort of gut reaction to that was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's not really, I mean, we weren't thinking like missionary, like move to Texas, like, you know, work in Haiti and stuff. Um, I don't know. And and we love the idea of going and doing something. But then when this came along, it was like, oh, man, this is this is a lot. And and so what we did with that is we prayed about it. You know, we took it to God and we prayed and we, we really tried to be open and surrendered in that prayer. Um, and we reached out for counsel, too. Um, and like, man, when you, when you, um, you know, reach out for godly counsel, um, and you start hearing the same thing, like over and over, um, what we heard was take the next step, you know, just walk forward and let God guide you, um, as you kind of search this out. And so we did that and it was, it was really cool. This, it was this process that God was doing in our hearts where he was kind of aligning our hearts with, um, his heart. And our eyes were open to the orphan crisis. And we just started making all these connections that we had never seen um, in our lives and just started seeing ways that God had actually been preparing us for this for a long time. And um, just through that process, um, yeah, basically we, we went from a no to like a wholehearted um, know that we know that we know yes. And that was just so exciting um, to be able to, to do that. And, Scary too, definitely scary, but really exciting. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, yeah. Prayer is powerful. <laughs> prayer is very powerful, and I think, like you said, um, it was just that intentional mindset of tr just be surrendered as you can, um, 
and and just pray, keep praying through this. And that's kind of what took us from one end of the spectrum to the to the other. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, I love I love how you just it was so confirming for you to hear the same thing from counsel of others mm -hmm. and through your prayers. Um, so I know this is a this is a position you're taking, Alexander, but this impacts your whole family and you guys are all in on this. Uh, tell us a little bit about Core Love and what resonates so much with the two of you. Yeah. So um, right now in the world, there are over 153 million orphans, um, which is just a staggering number. And um, we, for a long time, have had a heart for adoption. And we've talked about adoption, foster care, and just different ways of, you know, addressing that need. Um, well, we learned that um, less than 1% of that number um, are adopted every year, which adoption is an amazing thing. Um, and it's part of the answer, but it's not the whole answer. And, you know, the reality is that there are children that just need help where they are. And so um, that's the mission of Core Love. Core Love's mission is um, to bring the love of Jesus to orphans around the world. And so they work in impoverished areas where there's the greatest need and um, provide what they've identified as uh, the six basic needs of orphans, which are um, exactly what you would think, clean water, proper food, um, health care, education, um, job skills, and a Christ-centered loving home. And it's all done in the name of Jesus. And the ultimate goal is to introduce these children to their Heavenly Father mm -hmm. um, and to let them know that they matter, that they have value, that they were made for a purpose. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think for myself, the thing that resonates most, as Alexander kind of briefly shared before, it was quite a process for us going through from the from the knee jerk no to the yes. And we were having a conversation with our friends that are already involved at Core Love. Their names are John and Tracy Rizzo. And as we were kind of just being really transparent with them in one of those phone calls, um, we, we kind of said, listen, we have to be honest with you. We, we just don't see orphan care as our calling, as our ministry. You know, we've invested in, in other things over the years and, um, you know, we just, this wasn't on our radar. And so they said, okay, well, why don't you elaborate on that? And we said, all right, well, what we mean by that is we're really, really passionate about worship. <laughs> That's kind of a no brainer. Um, anybody who knows us knows that about us. We've invested many years in that, uh, just learning and growing and trying to be teachable um, so that we don't stop growing when it comes to that, um, uh, that part of our relationship with God. And then um, we've also been involved with homely, homeless ministry in the past. Um, we both, our entire lives have had a passion for homeless people and, um, also for anything that's anti-trafficking because just the thought of slavery, it just, it makes me kind of mad, you know, it brings up a zeal and a passion. Um, so in the past when I've had the opportunity to, I've tried to be an advocate and a voice for anything that's, um, that comes across our path that, you know, we can kind of be a voice for, um, and and so they they said after that point, well, well, guys, everything you just said makes it even better. And we were like, what? What are you talking about now? You need to elaborate. And um, they said, well, um, when you get involved with orphan care, you're actually kind of going upstream from these systemic injustices that you talked about. You know, while many people are needed um, and God is so good to bring people to kind of get down in the mess of these um, systemic issues that are going on, um, when you get involved with orphan care, um, you're actually preventing these kids from homelessness. You're taking them out of that homeless situation that could have been a trajectory for their whole lives. And um, you're, also, you're also preventing any trafficking organization that would come along and prey on these kids from ever happening. Um, and so that was super powerful. And we felt like, man, we just needed to chew on that for a while. And if that wasn't enough, they went on to say the founders of Core Love were actually youth pastors for quite a while. And God brought a burden on their hearts for orphan care. 
And so they started just feeling like, God, what can we do? And his message to them was, what's in your hand? So they're running an, a youth organization. And the Lord just said, you have musicians in your youth group. Um, I'm going to connect you to people in Haiti that are already taking care of orphans. Um, and you over here just worship and, and put on these benefit concerts. And you can use the funds to start sending those funds that you, you know, get from the benefit concerts to support these uh, pastors that you're making connections with that are already taking care of orphans in their home. And so it was just like, knock, they just knocked everything out. It was just like, holy cow, like we felt speechless. Like they have to be bluffing somewhere. <laughs> you know? It's just too good to be true. But it was such an eye opener for me. And I just love that all of the things that we've been so passionate about and um, so incredibly um, invested in at different seasons of our lives, it's all tied together in, in core love. That's so, good. Yeah. That's good. So God kind of deposited these passions in you both, but it, yeah. it just took a little bit of bringing some some clarity about how that connected with yes. your mission. Yes, they connected it. It was just amazing. That's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. So you guys are set to move pretty soon. What's the, the countdown at? Uh, today, or yeah, we'll, we're at uh, five weeks. Five weeks out. Yeah. So in about five weeks, you're going to touch down in Texas. Uh, when you get settled in in your home and then when you get settled in in the office, what does your, your strategy look like? How do you think you can best use your gifts and how are you most excited to to further the mission of Core Love? Yeah, that's a great question. We're, we're really excited about that. And um, it really is just God has prepared us for this and just prepared a place for us to serve there. Um, my title is going to be Director of Marketing. Um, and how that's been described to me is um, leading the storytelling efforts, um, leading the, telling the stories of the children that we're working with in Haiti um, and also in India. And um, yeah, just the stories of the staff too and the whole community and just the transformation, the redemption. Um, it's really beautiful. Just God is in the details, you know, and just, just the things that he draws out and, and just amazing things that are happening. So really it's, it's lifting up those stories, so, you know, to give God glory um, and really honor uh, our children and and all of that. Um, and then to really encourage and challenge, you know, us here in America through those stories of, man, what God's doing and, and you know, what does he have for all of us to be doing? And, you know, what's our role to play? So mm -hmm. excited about that. And part of that's going to be traveling to Haiti a few times a year as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, and for myself, um, we're just so excited because really, again, this is uh, this is such a dream come true, and it just brings everything that together that we ever dreamed about. Really, we we love doing ministry together. We always have, and um, so I have been um, also invited into whatever capacity I can kind of carry right now. Um, again, going back to the worship. Worship is a pillar of Core Love to this day. So not only did they do these benefit concerts, the, the organization was started on these benefit concerts through the worship youth group, um, but they continue to have weekly chapel services. And um, so worship is a huge part of those chapel services. They just, they go after the presence of God um, and it is real and it is raw and it is beautiful. Um, and so I've been invited to take part in that as much as I can. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that on a weekly basis. And then um, they also, just before the pandemic, actually, they had their first uh, community worship night at their headquarters. So they have a vision um, to continue to do that. Um, we actually got to go to their headquarters and experience the first one. Um, and it was amazing. Um, so, so I think about three to four times a year, they're going to try to do these, host these worship nights at their headquarters. And again, that just falls in line with the vision of just stirring people up in the States. Um, just trying to be a vessel of that, um, awakening and, uh, yeah, just the, the falling out of God's passion for this issue. Um, yeah. Uh, worldwide <laughs> yeah that's great and i know with your giftings you guys are going to bring so much to that that's exciting mm -hmm. so you've got two boys at home cal who's four years old and coda's uh just about a year and a half now mm -hmm. 
Um, I know as a children's pastor, I think one of the best things you can do to disciple your kids is to to be a good model for them, to, to model your faith life. And you're doing a fantastic job at that. Um, with this calling and, and this, this change coming, uh, have you seen God do anything, even though it's in the early stages in, in the lives of your boys? The answer is yes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's just, I'm probably going to get emotional. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, one of the biggest things going into this was that we we wanted this to be a calling on not just Alexander or even just Alexander and myself. We wanted this to be a calling on our family. And so uh, one of the things we started doing pretty early on was coming together um, as a family to pray for orphans. Um, the organization actually pauses every day at 153, um, representative of the 153 million orphans in the world, and they, they pray for orphans every single day. Um, so we adopted that into our family. And then... Um, during our morning time as a family, we also started praying for orphans. And before all of this, um, my my son, my oldest son, Callum, who's four years old, was very reluctant to pray. Like ever, if we invited him to, to pray about something, he'd just be like, no, no thanks. <laughs> and we just were like, okay, well, it's probably not something we should force, um, but we'll just pray into this. Um, and then after we said yes to this and just went through the process, went through the journey, we started praying for orphans. Um, something shifted in him. He, he, we gave him the vision. We, we told him, you know, and we took our time just trying to explain the changes that were coming. You know, we're, um, we're making our lives about this now. We're moving to another state um, to do this and, and all of that. But um, he he all of a sudden just started volunteering to pray for orphans. Um, and that was just huge because, I don't know, it was it was almost like after our yes, after that, like, final God, like, yes, we are surrendered to this invitation. It was like it didn't just shift in us. It shifted in our whole family. So, um, so that was amazing just to see that he went from no thanks to, oh, I want to pray for orphans. And now he almost prays for orphans every single morning um, when we pray together as a family. And then the second thing is, obviously, as a parent, you want your children to start a relationship with Jesus as soon as possible. And we've been praying about that together for a while. Um, and just about two weeks ago, this is where I'm going to get emotional, um, Calum was asking some really, really good, deep questions. And um, I, I had a feeling that it was something to really lean into. I just had this sense of like, he's trying to make connections, you know, um, because we've told him so much and we've tried to model as much as we can. We're not perfect. Um, but, you know, just the love of Jesus. Um, he was just making some connections and, and asking these really deep questions that I'd never heard come out of his mouth before. And so, um, I just tried to pray um, into these things and be led by the Spirit um, to give him answers, but really just tried to like give him the reins. Um, and uh, we had this conversation uh, one evening, and and then that led to him um, before I was um, about to say goodnight to him, just asking me, uh, "Does Jesus forgive and forget?" <laughs> and um, I was like, yeah, yeah, buddy, he does. And just tried to elaborate on that a little bit and just try to ask him, you know, where those questions were coming from and everything. And um, and just tried to bring it all back to you can trust Jesus to do anything for you. And then, um, you know, you can tell Jesus that you want to trust him at any time, you know. Um, and you can do that over and over again, you know, but... Um, he, I could just see the wheels turning in his mind, and it was just amazing. Um, again, I didn't want to force anything to happen, but I just said, you know, buddy, um, if you want to tell Jesus you want to trust him, mommy and daddy are here to do that with you, or if you want to do that by yourself, you can 
totally just take that moment with Jesus and, and just you. And so he kind of said, <laughs> I'll talk to you again in the morning, Mom. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think in the morning. So I was like, okay, you sleep on it. It's all good. So then in the morning, it was kind of hectic. We were actually getting ready to go on a vacation. But as we were um, pulling out or ready to walk out of the house, he pulled me in and he said, he whispered in my ear and he said, Mom, <laughs> he said, um, I told Jesus that um, I want him to forgive me and forget my sin. <laughs> and, um, and that I trust him. And so that was just huge just to see, um, again, the things that came after our yes, you know, just of surrender. Um, it, it just kind of almost, it's like these ripple effects that we keep seeing. Um, and it's not us. It's just the Holy Spirit and how he works. And so, man, two major things just like that. So, yeah. so amazing. <laughs> That's so powerful. And I, the picture I have is that, you know, that ha happened for Cal you guys are going to help bring this to the 153, you know, that need that to need to be connected yeah. with the heavenly father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys have been attending Calvary uh, for over three years now. Um, what has God done uh, through your serving, through the relationships you've built? Uh, what has he done through Calvary in, in your lives? <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> Sure. I mean, uh, a lot. <laughs> That's the short answer. Um, it's been amazing. Um, you know, when we came to Calvary, we kind of, we, we saw it, you know, oh, this will be an, an awesome place for us to serve, um, you know, make some new friendships. So we just had no idea what God had in store for us here. Um, and he's really used these past three years to bring a lot of healing, um, into our lives, into our hearts, our minds. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of work on just identity, you know, um, really, what is our identity in Christ? Mm -hmm. How does God our Father see us? What is God like? And just kind of unlearning a lot of stuff we had picked up and, and really just seeing the heart of the Father and um, knowing who we are in Christ. And it's been, it's been really amazing. Um, and then not just being able to serve, which we love serving, we love ministry, but um, really being empowered in that, um, and growing in that and discovering new gifts. And um, I think the biggest thing too is just, um, yeah, like being encouraged to ask, you know, what's next and to believe that with God, there's always a next, you know, like we say that here, um, but that's really, that's this whole story. That's what this is, you know, and this is what God has next for us. And we don't know our whole lives, but we know this is next. And um, so he's really used Calvary I mean, there's so much more, but that's kind of the things that come to mind. Well, we we love your mission. We love what you're what you guys are doing and partnering with Core Love uh, Church Family. If you want to support Alexander and Kristen, uh, you can simply go to our website, rcalvary.org, and click on the Give button, or you can go directly to rcalvary.org forward slash Give. And we have an option there set up. It's set up right now. Uh, you'll see Core Love and the Gartley family, and that's a way that you can support them. And every single penny that you give goes directly to support them. We don't have any fees that come out of that. Um, Alexander, if people want to find out more or stay connected with you guys or find further ways that they can support you, what's the, the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah, and I just want to say, too, um, that, man, we just we really appreciate that. Um, you know, if anyone is 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 feeling that they want to support and um, I just want to say too, like we need prayer support as well as we step into this. Um, we recognize that we're in over our heads and uh, really that this is spiritual too. You know, this is spiritual warfare and, um, you know, it's advancing the kingdom of God around the world. And um, yeah, so we would just love for people to partner with us in prayer as well, um, just committing to that. Um, and yeah, we, we, we do need the financial support. Um, that is part of this as we go, you know, for us to be able to go and say yes to this call, we need other people um, to come alongside of us and, and support us financially. And, you know, we know that God doesn't call everyone to go, but everyone can play a part. And we're just excited to offer that opportunity um, to people. So yeah, we're looking for 
for monthly partners, um, you know, asking people to pray about, consider just ongoing support so that we can be sustained um, while our family's there and we're able to do this ministry, um, you know, for the long haul. Um, and if, you know, people aren't able to do that or, or feel led to give like a launching gift as well, that's, that's helpful too. Um, we have raised about 50%, just over 50% of our support um, that we need. Praise God, like he's, he's been doing it. He's doing this. And, uh, but yeah, we, there, we need more support and, and we're leaving soon. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, if if um you know if uh if people could do that, that'd be awesome. Um and where can they find out? Um I think you have a link or something we can connect with you, right? Yeah, so um right on the Calvary website, um rcalvary.org uh slash core love, and that's C O R E L U V. Um and that'll take you there's links there to um, you know, partner with us, um, learn more. If you want to start a conversation with us, we would love to, to share more, answer questions, um, and just, I don't know, just hear about other people's dreams and experiences too. Um, you know, awesome. Yeah. Well, we love you guys. We're, we're so excited for you. Uh, we're definitely going to miss you. Uh, we support you. Uh, what we want you to know is that when you guys are in Texas and you come back to Rochester, um, for us, you're, you're not just visiting, you're, you're coming home. You'll always be a part of our church family. Um, what would you guys like to end with, with your church family? Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. I'll go first. <laughs> I'll let him do the closing words. Um, I think that, yeah, that's our heart, too. Yeah. Definitely. Exactly what you just said. I couldn't say it any better our, myself. Um, and the other thing that came to mind is that the last thing we want as we sit here and share about this journey and this calling is for people to think that we are the poster children <laughs> for Christianity. That is not what this is about. We share our story to encourage people um, because we believe that, um, man, the message of the next thing, you know, um, that God always has new and always has more for us. Um, is not just for us, it's for everybody. And so we just, man, we just, our prayer is that we are stirring people up that um, as you're here at Calvary, um, God is just doing amazing things. He is, I, I think, probably beyond ourselves, healing a lot of um, the rest of you. And um, as you are healed of so many things, um, that just gives birth. It almost gives regeneration to the dreams, to the the things that you kind of had locked up inside of you. At least that's what we experienced as we were being healed of things, strongholds and, you know, agreements made with the enemy and everything. Um, yeah, just this this rebirth was was happening and this rekindling of of the dreams that God had put inside of us from a very young age. Um, and so we just want that for everyone at Calvary. Um, and, and that's why we share our story. Yeah, that's, yeah, so good. And yeah, I would just add, um, yeah, we're so excited to come back and visit. Yeah. We will be back. And, you know, we want to hear, like, this is a really exciting time for Calvary. We yeah. want to hear the stories of what God's doing. We want to want to hear from you all, you know, um, and just, mm -hmm. and see what God's doing in Chilai, in Rochester, you know, in our church family. And then be able to share with you guys too, like what we're experiencing and what we're seeing, you know, in, in Haiti. And um, yeah, really excited for that. And uh, yeah, I just want to honor um, God and I want to honor our church too and just say thank you. I just want to say thank you, man, um, to the staff, to the leadership, um, just to every person um, from the moment we, we first came to Calvary, just the kindness and welcoming that we, that we received um, just the generosity of people, like um, just inviting us into this family, into their lives, um, the lifelong friendships that we have. You know, this is this is bittersweet. Like yeah. we're so excited for what's ahead, but um, we just have so much here that we love, and so uh, we love that this isn't goodbye. Like, yeah, yeah. and we have that same vision. Yeah. Um, the yeah. the vision that God has given us is that this isn't a separation, but an expansion. Yeah of the Calvary family, mm -hmm. of what God is doing through us. And um, 
yeah, we're just really excited for that and all that God has in store. Just can't wait to see. Yeah. Awesome. That's so good. Um, so Kristen and Alexander, I just want to close and pray over you. And even in your homes, uh, I invite you to join in and just extend your hands or um, pray together as a family over the Gartleys. Um, Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for Alexander and Kristen and the boys. And we thank you uh, for your calling and that you have a next for each and every one of us. And we thank you for the Gartley's faithfulness in answering that call. And Lord, as they use their gifts to bless others and to connect the fatherless with a loving Heavenly Father, we pray that you would continue to bless them as well. And we just thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you.